Up to now, we've been dealing with the case of bending about the z-axis. And what I'd like to briefly look at is what happens if you have bending about both the z and the y-axis for a beam. So we'll go ahead and assume that the cross-section is doubly symmetric. That'll kind of simplify life for us a little bit. We won't have to worry about a couple of special cases. But um, So let's go ahead and consider the situation where we have loads that bend the beam both about the y-axis and about the z-axis. So transverse loads could be shear forces in the z-direction now and also moments about the y-axis to cause bending and give us deflection in the z direction in addition to bending in the y direction. So just to, to remind ourselves, so we, if we have moment about the z axis, then we will have curvature about the z axis, which is given to us as the second derivative of the deflection in the y direction. And also we have this relationship between the moment in the, about the z axis and the curvature about the z axis, which is given to us by multiplying the curvature about the z axis by EI about the where i is the moment of inertia about the z-axis. So iz is the integral of y squared dA in this case. So that's what we've been doing up to now. Now, if I put a moment about the y-axis, I'm going to get motion in the z-direction. So we'll denote motion in the z-direction by w. So w is deflection in the z-direction, so positive in the z-direction. And we'll define curvature about the y-axis as minus w double prime, so two derivatives of w with respect to x. And, and the minus there is just a convention. Uh, and the convention is designed so that if I have a positive bending moment acting on the beam, that I'm going to end up with a positive curvature about the y-axis. So recall that if I have a positive bending moment about the y-axis, uh, that means that I have a, a moment as shown here in purple. And that's going to produce a deflection that's going to go in the negative z direction. So to be able to get positive moment to produce positive curvature, I need a minus sign here. So, But this is just a definition, so you don't have to overthink it too much. So w is deflection in the positive z direction, so that's positive w. And we define curvature about the y-axis to be minus uh, the second derivative of w with respect to x. So this is the situation that I have when we have moments that can cause bending about two axes. And we could also have shear forces that would also lead to the same result. Now, the basic observation if you bend a beam about two axis, axes is that the plane sections are still going to remain plane. And normals in the xy plane and in the xz plane also remain normal to each other. So our basic kinematic assumptions are the same, but the motion is a little bit more complicated. We don't just have rotation of the cross-section about the x-axis, we have simultaneous rotation of the cross-section about the y-axis. Uh, if you go ahead and draw the differential element and try and compute what the strains are, we'll see that we're left with the same problem. We're trying to find the bending strains, so the epsilon xx, the normal strains in the x-direction, uh, and that they're going to be linear on the cross-section. So in the general expression for a linear function in terms of y and z is going to be some constant, let's say a, plus a constant b times y plus a constant c times z. And this is the general expression that one gets for the, uh, the bending strains when you have bending about two axes. Um, now these constants a, b, and c, they're actually related to the curvatures here. So the b is minus kappa z, the curvature about the, y, the, about the z axis. and the C is kappa y with a plus sign there. And A is going to be the axial strain at the origin of the coordinate system. So we, we can actually place our coordinate system really wherever we'd like to do it uh, in this case here, the way I've, I've set up the equations here. So in the two-axis bending case, we have a linear strain distribution on the cross-section. It's linear in y and it's linear in z. And we also account for the fact that we can have a normal strain at the coordinate origin. So the coordinate origin is not necessarily the center of rotation for the, the beam. Okay, so this is the, the basic kinematics when you have multi-axis bending. It's a little bit more complicated, but uh, you can think of it sequentially as bending about z and then bending about y if you want. And the signs account for the fact that the coordinate axes are going in different directions here. To complement our kinematic relationship, we're also going to need equilibrium relations for uh, 
multi-axis bending. So I've drawn a differential element cut out of the beam here, and I'm showing all the loads and internal forces acting on it. So the loads consisted of can consist of a distributed force in the y direction and a distributed force in the z direction now. So the z distributed force will give me bending about the y axis. Uh, I have three components of force, internal force acting on a cross section. So there's the force in the x direction, force in the y, which we had before, and new force in the z direction now when we that will cause bending about the, the y axis. And then we also have moments. We have moment z, which we had before, which gives us bending. Uh, about the z-axis, and we have moment about the y-axis, which will give us bending about the y-axis. Uh, to get the equilibrium equations point by point in the beam, what we can do is look at the free body diagram here, and we can go ahead and look at the free body diagram in the xy plane, which looks like what we had before, and in the xz plane, uh, which is new here, because before we didn't have moment y or shear force z. and we can go ahead and apply our standard differential equilibrium arguments to develop the equilibrium equation. So if I do some of the forces in the x direction, I'm going to go ahead and find out that dr dx plus b equals zero. So I didn't draw the, the body forces in the x direction in, but uh, that will give you that equilibrium equation. If I sum the forces in the y direction on the differential element, then I'll find that dvy dx plus q of y equals zero. And then if I sum the forces in the z direction, I'll find out dvz dx plus qz equals zero. So that's the new equilibrium equation there for some of the forces in the z direction. That will give us motion in the z direction. Um, I can also do moment equilibrium. And for moment equilibrium, I'll get dm dz with respect to x e plus the shear force in the y direction equals zero. And the derivative of the moment about the y-axis minus shear force in the z direction uh, is equal to zero. So those are the equilibrium equations. There are five of them. There's no torsion in, in bending. Uh, and we also have the connection to the stresses. Uh, so integrating the normal stress on the cross section gives me r. If I integrate the shear stress in the y direction, I'll get vy. And if I integrate the shear stress in the z direction, I'll get vz. So that's the new expression here uh, in multi-axis bending. And we can also have expressions for moment about the z-axis. That's going to be sigma xx times minus y dA. And for the moment about the y-axis, I have z dx dA. So if I look at a small differential element of area, let's say, dA, then there's a force here, which is sigma xx dA. And then if I want moment about the y-axis, I need the lever arm to the y-axis. And the lever arm to the y-axis is going to be this distance here, which is z.